welcome to the MBSE Embassy. In this edition, we'll be looking at the evolution of MBSE. As we all know from the MBSE mantra, in order to deploy successful MBSE, there are three considerations that we have to bear in mind, and that's people, process, and tools. Or, as we say in the MBSE world, one or more person, one or more process, and one or more tools. In particular, we need to be able to understand the relationships between these three concepts, and that's that the people enable the process, and the process drives the tool. This is discussed in some of our other videos, so we won't dwell too much on it for now. At some point, however, you need to start to employ your model-based systems engineering into your organisation, and you need to start somewhere. Deploying model-based systems engineering isn't a step change, it's not an overnight activity, it's something that takes time and it's going to depend on what your cap current capabilities are and what it is you want to achieve in the first place. Because of this, there is a natural evolution of MBSE and that's what we're going to be discussing today. So our start point is we need to consider that model-based systems engineering evolution comprises a number of stages. We've identified five stages to illustrate the evolution, which are stage one, document-based, stage two, document-centric, stage three, document-enhanced, stage four, model-centric, and stage five, model-based. All these are illustrated beautifully with Lego John in the picture. Now these stages are shown here purely for illustrative purposes. We're not suggesting for one second that every organisation will go through these as absolute distinct stages. It's just a natural trend that we need to understand in order to fully comprehend exactly what it is we're trying to do with our MBSE deployment. So let's look at each of these stages in turn and let's consider the people, process and tools that need to be in place for each of these stages. So in stage one, document-based systems engineering, we need to look at what these outcomes are. The people will have systems engineering competence. They'll have a good basic skill set in systems engineering and they should be carrying out systems engineering, albeit document-based. The process, the overall approach, will, all the artifacts will be documents. They'll have tables, lists, graphs, and so on, but very heavily text-driven. And as I say, the list, the graphs, and so on, might very well be independent of the text descriptions. In terms of tools, typically, these will be office type tools, such as spreadsheets, word processors, uh, uh, presentation software, and so on and so on. I think we all know the software that I'm alluding to there. Stage two is what we refer to as document-centric systems en engineering. And the outcomes in this case are the people obviously still have the systems engineering competence, but they might have some sort of informal notational skill. They might be using flowcharts, or they might be using mind maps, or very simple UML or SysML, some sort of notation that people are starting to play around with. The documents, uh, the artifacts are still documents, tables, lists, graphs, and so on. But what we'll now see are pictures start to appear as part of these documents. And in fact, what we might very well find as a result of this is that the pile of documents actually gets taller. It actually starts to increase. The tools that we'll typically see at this point will be the office tools, so again, the spreadsheets, the word processors, the presentation software, but also simple drawing packages that people will be using to illustrate the points that they're trying to make during the documentation using the text as descriptions. Stage three, we refer to as model enhanced systems engineering. People have a notational competence now. They're starting to have an MBSE awareness. And again, there's a big difference between the notation and MBSE. The process, the models will start to emerge from the documents. We'll start to see documents and models coexisting. We also might very well see MBSE start to be applied on a small pilot project, for example, within uh, one or two groups within a large organisation. And at this point as well, people may very well be looking at multiple candidate tools looking at the tools that are available and starting to get their head around them, maybe starting to play around with the tools. Stage four, we refer to as model-centric systems engineering. In this case, the people have model-based systems engineering competence. They understand the MBSE and the slide concepts. 
they have tool competence. We start to see the, the, the proper rigorous approach emerge, the ontology, the framework, the processes. We start to measure and assess the pilot projects that might be running in our organisation and use the results of these measurements to feed back to improve the way that we're doing things. The tool, or in reality, the tools that people have been looking at might very well be selected at this point. We might have a number of tools, some modelling tools, some simulation tools, some management tools, whatever, that we're using together. Stage five is our Nirvana-like model-based systems engineering stage. People have model-based systems engineering competence. We're starting to see mature ontologies, mature frameworks, mature process sets. We're starting to apply patents and sophisticated applications, and we're starting to see a rollout across the entire organisation. We're starting to see integrated tool sets. So now our simulation tools are merging seamlessly with our modelling tools and emerging seamlessly with our management tools. We're starting to see profiles being created in the tools so that we can enforce our overall approach within the tools. We start to see automation within the tools as well. So these are the five stages that we need to consider when it comes to deploying model-based systems engineering, but there are some cross-cutting concerns that are going to apply across all of these stages, such as configuration management, consistency, traceability and maintenance. Remember, our model is a living entity. It's going to evolve as time goes on. So we have to make sure that we can manage and control that evolution as well as possible. We also need to consider that in order to evolve from one stage to another, we need to consider a number of transition activities. So for example, if we consider the transition between stage one, document-based, and stage two, document-centric, we have to have some sort of assessment of what our current capability is. We can do this by applying things like the MBS in a slide and this evolution. We also, very importantly, need to know why we want to do MBSE in the first place. If we don't know why we want to do MBSE, we can't demonstrate that we've met our objective because we don't know where they are. This is the subject of one of our other videos, but it's essential that we know why, what it is we're setting out to achieve, what outcomes do we want when we deploy our model-based systems engineering. When it comes to transitioning from stage two, document-centric, to stage three, model enhanced, we might want to consider things like notation training and tool evaluation, getting the mechanisms in place that are going to allow us to become more mature and to kind of put it in a position so that we can start to apply these techniques properly. When we transition from stage three to stage four, this is where things really start to kick off. We're starting to look at things like model-based systems engineering training, process definition, tool selection, tool training, framework and ontology definition, putting the mechanisms in place that are really going to allow us to start to get the true benefits of model-based systems engineering. And then the transition from stage four, model-centric, to stage five, model-based. We're looking at advanced applications. We're looking at things like competency assessment for our people, model maturity, process maturity for our approach, tool tailoring, all these sorts of things we're going to be looking at, all these different types of activities. One of the reasons why this is important to know is that very often when people start to deploy model-based systems engineering, uh, they'll be, for example, at stage one, a document-based. And then when we talk to them, they'll say things like, yes, of course we want MBSE, but what we really want to do is variant modeling. Unfortunately, the answer to that is you can't do variant modeling at the moment because variant modeling is a stage five type of application and you're only at stage one. You need to be able to walk before you can run. In this case, you need to go through these evolution of stages before you can even start to consider some of the complex applications. It's the same with things like profiling the tools. We can't start to profile the tools until we've gone through this evolution to at least stage four and moving on to stage five. So. Very importantly, when it comes to assessing where you are in terms of your own model-based systems engineering capability, there's a couple of things that you need to look at that are very useful and very powerful. One is you need to know where you sit on the MBSE in a slide. That's the subject of another video that you can look at. The other thing is you need to be able to point to which of these stages on the MBSE evolution you're at at the moment. And it's very important when we're doing this assessment to be absolutely honest about where you actually sit in terms of your current capabilities. Only then 
can we come up with a plan, a strategy to move on and deploy your MBSE in a rigorous and repeatable and demonstrable manner. And that's got to be our goal in terms of MBSE facilitation. So, to summarise then, there is a natural evolution when it comes to deploying MBSE. We need to consider the five stages and we need to consider that we need to evolve throughout these stages. We need to transition between them. These stages might not be discrete as we presented here. They might be purely conceptual, but it really should be used as an aid to really increase your understanding of exactly where you are at the moment.